Hello friends, myself Jaivir and today we are going to learn about the engineering thermodynamic subject as per the syllabus of the Gujarat Technological University as per the syllabus of the automobile engineering and mechanical engineering branch code 02 and 19 and the subject code is 217905 as per the syllabus of the GTU and may be applicable for the other university as per the topic. So let's start the journey. This index is based on the first module of the engineering thermodynamics subject which having the sub modules like basic concepts, the thermodynamic microscopic and microscopic properties, thermodynamic system and control volume, thermodynamic properties, thermodynamic cycle and uh, processes, uh, the thermodynamic equilibrium and quasi-static process. This is the as per the first module of the syllabus of the 2131905 subject in automobile and mechanical engineering subject. Let's start with the macroscopic and microscopic point of view of this uh, if this is asked in case of uh, GTU examination, then how to write it down that I will explain to you. But what is macroscopic and microscopic point of view? So you might have heard the word of microscope, correct? So what is microscope? When you want to observe something very little, something which is at a atomic, atomic level, at that time you are using the microscope. It means whatever you are not able to view by the naked eye, at that time you need to use the microscopic level. Otherwise you need to use macroscopic point of view. Macroscopic point of view means if some vehicle is passing nearby you and you are observing that what at which speed the vehicle is passing that is called the macroscopic point of view. But if you are uh, taking one slip of the uh, onion and if you are observing it that some of the lives are present inside the onion then it is called the microscopic point of view i hope you are cleared by the view what do you mean by macroscopic and what do you mean by microscopic point of view so let's discuss about how to write it down if it is asked in more than uh, one or two marks or say five or seven marks at that time you need to write down this this is the short key that you need to remember in order to write down the whole difference so first is mole mole means the event at a molecular level the event at a molecular level is need to be considered in case of microscopic point of view so in the contradictory of it in case of macroscopic point of view it is not need to be considered the behavior of the molecule need to be understood in case of microscopic point of view not in case of macroscopic point of view e the mol means event of the molecular b means behavior of the molecular e means the uh, e means what we are observing by the naked eye that is macroscopic point of view if you are not able to view it by the naked eye then it is microscopic point of view a means the assumption made in it and the example if the car is moving with the velocity then it is called the macroscopic point of view and the mole molecular behavior of the air or whatever air pres uh, atoms present in the air their molecular behavior, if it is need to be defined, that is called the macroscopic point of view. Let's see the difference. You can pause this video, you can view the slide. I am going to. Thermodynamic system and control volume. Now, what do you mean by thermodynamic system? Any region or place in which the thermodynamic analysis is carried out is called a thermodynamic system. Suppose if we are taking the heat of this flame, then this is our system. The dotted side is the boundary of the system. There are two types of boundary. One is diathermic boundary and another one is uh, adiabatic boundary. Diathermic boundary which allows heat to transfer and uh, sorry, adiabatic boundary which does not allow heat to transfer and diathermic boundary means which allows heat to transfer to the system. And whatever outside the boundary is called surrounding as mentioning this is system this is boundary and this is surrounding everything outside the system is called surrounding so 
so what do you mean by boundary boundary which separates the system from the surrounding let's discuss about the thermodynamic system type there are three types of thermodynamic system open system closed system and isolated system open system is a system in which the energy and mass can transfer through the system the example of the open system is geyser in which energy input as electricity energy output as a heat and mass of the water transfer through the system closed system means mass is fixed but energy can transfer so example of the closed system is refrigerator in which the refrigerant mass is fixed it is not uh, repeatedly uh, filling and uh, emptying process it is fixed electricity as an energy input and the heat which is extract from the whatever vegetables are placed inside the refrigerator that is the output so energy is transferred but mass is fixed the isolated system the best example of the isolated system is thermos in which no heat transfer and no mass transfer if you are attacking a tea in a thermos so it will not reduce its mass and also not reduce its uh, heat so that is the example of the isolated system now let's discuss about the control volume control volume is the space in which thermodynamic analysis is carried out means all the mass and uh, energy uh, from where it is transferred that is called the volume that volume is called the control volume thermodynamic properties there are two types of thermodynamic properties intensive property and extensive property intensive property is does not depend upon mass but extensive property does depend upon mass so the density of the water is 1000 kg per meter cube if you are taking 1 liter of bottle of water or 10 liter of bottle of water the energy does uh, sorry the density does not change because it does not depend upon the mass whatever will be the mass of the water the density of the water remains same 1000 kg per meter cube so that's why it is called intensive property it does not depend upon mass so here are the some of the examples of the the units or the, the uh, intensive and extensive property see the specific volume whenever the specific word is used it is called intensive property because specific word means that it is divided by the kg by the mass so it is specifically whether how much amount of mass that is divided by the meter cube it means specific volume is always to be intensive property so wherever specific term is used it is intensive property and other things are extensive property which relates to mass if the volume increases of anything it increases mass that's why it is called extensive property of the system pause this slide and try to analyze it and mind well you need to know the conversion of the unit that is the priority of my i will always uh, tell my students that you need to know the uh, end of the conversion it means one of the examples of the end of the conversion is suppose we are taking uh, pascal pascal means newton per meter square newton means kg meter into second square meter per second square and so that's why in that manner joule means newton into meter newton again kg meter per second square so you need to able to divide the uh, the the units at the end of the thing so that's why we are we are able to connect it with the principles of the newton's first law second law third law like that and it is very easy to do third thing is process and cycle you have learned so many processes in elements of mechanical engineering subject one is isothermal process temperature constant isobaric process pressure constant isophoric process volume constant isentropic process entropy constant adiabatic process no transfer of heat isenthalpic process which is in case of vcr system is happening in which enthalpy remains constant polytropic process in which heat can pass but in a small amount p vs to n is equal to constant and cycles examples are carnot cycle rankine cycle otto cycle diesel cycle do not worry about it we will going to discuss it in a later one so what do you mean by cycle cycle means first of all you need to understand the state of the system system can exist or matter can exist in a three state one is liquid 
solid or gaseous suppose system start with the uh, solid state then it is converted by from one process into liquid state suppose by the second process into gaseous state and again the system is coming into the original phase of solid state so it is called cycle means by the processes through the processes if the original state is coming again then it is called cycle when the one processes are mixing with the other processes and if the if the original state of the matter is coming reversible uh, coming again then it is called cycle process means if you are interchange from the one state to another state then it is called process or path of the system process having a specific or a specified amount of uh, uh, properties which is specific so that's why it is called proper process the isothermal process means temperature is constant then and then you can say it is a process otherwise it is called path whenever nothing is suggest that in which manner it is working okay so let's discuss about it in detail the next slide will give you the definition of all the things state path process and cycle you can uh, what yeah. i'll switch definition over here proceed ahead <coughs> the next thing which we are going to discuss in this uh, topic is thermodynamic equilibrium when the system is exists in thermal equilibrium in mechanical equilibrium and in chemical equilibrium then the system is said to be thermodynamic equilibrium let's discuss about the thermal equilibrium when the two bodies are at a different different temperature exist then heat always flow from higher body temperature to lower body temperature until the temperature is equilibrate means until the temperature becomes equal so this is called thermal equilibrium in which the hotter body uh, release the heat and the cooler body absorb the heat and becomes the equal temperature body after some time limit according to the thermal equilibrium there is one law which is called zeroth law of thermodynamics which is nothing but when the body a is in thermal equilibrium with body b and body b is in thermal equilibrium with body c then the body a and c are in thermal equilibrium with each other means if the temperature of a and b are equal b and c are equal then we can say that the temperature of a and c are equal this is called zeroth law of thermodynamics let's discuss about the mechanical equilibrium from this figure you are definitely sure about what do you mean by mechanical equilibrium when the static and dynamic forces are in equilibrium condition means if the one force is exist in a vertic vertical direction then the another force is exist in a downward direction then the system is said to be in equilibrium condition both the, the forces are having same magnitude and a static and dynamic as well and last but not the least the chemical equilibrium means throughout the structure throughout the structure of the uh, metal the matter having the same chemical composition throughout its matter that's why it is called chemical equilibrium so when the system exists in it, this three conditions then the system is said to be in a thermodynamic equilibrium quasi static process it is a uh, ideal process in which is reversible process in which what happen this weights are removed uh, this weights are removed and each and every time whenever the weight remove what happen this piston moves in upward direction and the gas will expand it means the volume of the gas increase as well as pressure of the gas decrease that is notified by this uh, this uh, equilibrium states okay so this are the state which defines when the weight is removed from it and after achieving this position means after removing the weight one position will achieve when the piston meets the stop at that time what to do we are adding some weight same amount of weight and we are observing the same pressure and temperature it means when we are removing the weight 
the path is follow from initial state to final state means pressure decreases and volume increases and when we are adding the uh, weight at that time it will follow the reverse manner of path in the same path it, this process is occurring that's why it is called reversible process but one thing that you need to take care is throughout the process the thermal equilibrium condition need to be maintained means the temperature of the system does not change and this is not possible when we are uh, and if it is possible then how it is possible you need to take infinite time to remove this small amount of weight very infinite small amount of weight it will take the infinite time means each and every time whenever you are flipping just a little bit at the time temperature does not change then and then this process is said to be a quasi static process otherwise not and we are doing very fast things and that's why the quasi static process is not a realistic process but the quasi static process is reversible process and as we are knowing reversible process is the having the highest efficiency Thank you very much. If you are liking this video, then please share it. Let's share it to the other mechanical uh, engineer, not only mechanical engineer, those who are working in the industry. Share this thing related to the thermal engineering. Thank you very much for your kind cooperation. Uh, if you like this, subscribe it and comment it, whatever you are feeling. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.